when you look at, well, you know, I only ate 20 carbs today. Where is all this sugar coming from? And the word is gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis is um, a fancy word that says glucose that comes from a sugar that you don't make. And when you look at the glucose uh, in the sugar that you don't make, it is a, um, it comes from the stored glucose that's in the muscle cells and in the liver. When I look at liver cells and muscle cells, um, uh, they have po pockets of this stored glucose called glycogen, and it is stuck there when they have high insulin. And so when, when you look at dropping your carbohydrates to 20 units or 20 grams or less per day, the other part that we do in Lackland's case is we took away that short acting insulin and we've slowly, I mean, we started out at 55 units of long acting is where she started. And now she's down to uh, between 45 and 50 units. We're kind of figuring that out. But that relative drop in the insulin allows that stored glucose to be released into her bloodstream. And she has never been able to do that probably in the 10 years that she's been, I mean, unless she, her sugars get really low. Um, but even when they get really low, if with as much insulin as she's been injecting, that glycogen gets stored. And when it's stored for a little bit, uh, no problem. Your body is supposed to use it as a, as a place to get energy. And when you don't take any carbs in, you're like, well, where is it all coming from? And it's coming from these stored vacuoles that are in your liver and in your muscle cells. When patients write in and say, Dr. Boz, why do you have the Dr. Boz ratio just checked in the morning? And I'm like, because then I wanna know how well you emptied your liver. And like, I don't get that. And like, if you haven't, uh, if, if that's really confusing to you, this is where I really push you to go check out this book any way you can. It is the teaching tool that I like the most. And it outlines why I care so much about your liver and what happens. But uh, it, it is a not only a teaching tool, it's a really good story and it helps support this channel. So thank you for all of you that have purchased it. And I uh, am even more thankful for the ones that have written the Amazon book reviews. Um, in, the, in the bigger picture of Lackland's morning fasting blood sugars though, she's like, how does it get to be 240? And all I think is look at how many more vacuoles we opened. Because in the setting of her 240, her say a couple of your, uh, your ketones for the last week, Lackland. Uh, 1.0, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. Yes. I mean, those aren't like accidental ketones. Those ketones are absolutely, your body has been to ketosis. And that means that the insulin is low enough. And so is, uh, the ketone that has improvement in, uh, so your ketones can't be made when the insulin has been super high. She's been injecting insulin. So her body is used to this certain level. That's what we call insulin resistant. As she starts to lower the insulin, that's when the ketones are able to be made. And as she drops the glucose, it signals to her body, hey, the glucose is not coming in through, the, uh, through her eating. We need to get it out of storage. And it's that gluconeogenesis, that ability to tap into the stored glucose that not only is it a metabolic uh, um, energy that it's a way to, that she, we know she's gonna be losing weight from this, but it also is her body's ability to get that out of storage. Because when we look at that cirrhosis of the liver, uh, that um, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is NASH, N-A-S-H, um, this is a stiffened, hardened liver because of those vacuoles being there for years and years with the inflammation because the insulin was high and the glucose never never was able to lower enough because they kept dosing in those carbohydrates every couple of hours. So as much as you're frustrated with those morning fasting sugars, it is a slow, steady transition that is so important for your body to get used to this and for us to gently take this one little step at a time, keeping the morning insulin always in the morning, never twice a day. <laughs> so at a girl. <laughs> So if you look at excess glucose floating around your body, the first thing that your body does with that is it binds it up with a bunch of friends. Um, so I put these glucose uh, in a bubble. Uh, really, it, they're in a, a vacuole inside the cell. And there are not just, a, you know, uh, yeah, I put a couple dozen in here, but there are uh, hundreds uh, of glucose uh, molecules put together. And this molecule is called glycogen. Um, and glycogen is really the fancy doctor word for stored glucose. Uh, specifically, we're putting that stored glucose inside your liver uh, and inside your muscle cells. So 
um, one of the one of the key problems with having really high sugars is the body will turn it, it first will fill up the glycogen uh, it will make sure all these little glycogen bubbles are adequate adequately stored for anybody that might need energy in the next you know couple weeks so if you look at um, this is a muscle cell it's actually um, you know when you look at how um, the mitochondria which Mitochondria are the furnace that are inside our cells. And when we use glucose uh, to fuel our furnaces, that energy goes way up and then it shoots way down. So um, here's a muscle cell and these, this mitochondria, um, these, it can't use the, the glycogen that's stored like this. The glycogen has to come outside of that little bubble, go into the mitochondria and then poof out the energy to keep that cell alive. Um, the other place that there is a huge amount of storage um, uh, of glycogen is your liver. Your liver has um, it, such an abundant uh, capacity to store glycogen um, as well as fat. Um, one of the biggest dangers that Lachlan has in her uh, life journey is that her liver will become uh, hard and cirrhotic. Uh, cirrhosis of the liver is most commonly found not in my alcoholics but in my uh, type in my diabetics who have just had too high of sugars for too long um, you add alcohol use to that and it's like adding fire to a problem uh, mm. you know fuel to the fire of a problem so when you look inside this this uh, uh, liver there's you know probably per per square inch of this liver there's way more glycogen uh, bubbles filled with glucose uh, uh, as compared to the muscle cell that has a few, a few bubbles filled with glycogen. But when you look at the mass of our bodies, we actually store more glycogen in our muscles than we do in our liver because we only have one liver. Um, even though it can get quite large, it's never going to be the same mass as our muscle cells. Uh, we have an incredible uh, volume of muscle cells that all put little storage bubbles in there. <laughs> So when when you look, uh, you know, you, you Google some of the struggles with a ketogenic diet and folks will say things like, um, oh, gluconeogenesis is like a bad thing. Like we don't want your body making glucose. And I would say, no, 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 don't say, don't do that. Gluconeogenesis is the use of stored glucose. And especially in a type 1 diabetic, it is the cause of, you know, when you look at my clinic uh, and you study the folks over 60 years old, they either all have diabetes or pre-diabetes. And they, their bodies may say that they're 60 years old, but they've aged into their 90s. Uh, and part of that is things like this. This glycogen is supposed to be used every day. You're supposed to empty that storage every day. And oh. your body chemistry wouldn't allow that because we were giving you excessive amounts of insulin to lower your glucose. That when you make, when you emptied those bubbles, the best news is, A, you reverse the age of some of those old crotchety muscles. <laughs> They're gonna be younger now. Um, but you, all, you also, um, it took energy to fill them back up. So your body has to have these little glycogen bubbles around. And what, looking at gluconeogenesis, one of the key things is, well, how old is your, how old is your glycogen? If it's only been there for a few hours because now you're going to go for a walk and your muscles are going to need energy, they're first going to use the glycogen. Um, when you're keto adapted, they will also use fat cells, um, triglycerides in your in your muscles as well, but they first use glycogen. So what we what the key is, we just don't want old storage of glycogen in your muscle cells. And as a diabetic, you kept adding and adding and adding to your um, storage of of these um, these old glucose molecules or old glycogen molecules in your in your muscles and um, in your liver. Uh, another one says, "Good evening. Please help the uncontrolled diabetic. I'm fasting for 72 hours and my blood sugars are still above 200. Uh, any ideas how to lower these, please? And thank you. Again, that's similar to what I was just going through with Lachlan, which is." The, the gluconeogenesis, which is what your body is doing, is emptying all of these vacuoles that have been stored for so long. Um, when you're not putting in carbohydrates in your mouth, your body stores them. Uh, there's uh, so much storage in your liver, but that's about one third of the amount of storage because every muscle cell has this storage of glycogen in it as well. And when you have high insulin, you cannot... You cannot empty those until the insulin goes down. How does the insulin go down? 
the insulin goes down when the carbohydrates go down. And that's why this diet starts with the recommendation that you get those carbohydrates to 20 or less. That it is a powerful teaching tool. Uh, when I look at, um, you know, I, I think this graph, let's see if this does this. Yeah, this is the insulin Dr. Boz ratio where they take blood glucose uh, and uh, divide it by those ketones and they get a Dr. Boz ratio. Um, when you do that, um, we want the Dr. Boz ratio to be less than 80 to be a weight loss, but less than 40 when they are trying to work on their immune system. Um, I think this, uh, this is one of my favorite little slides that talks about um, if you look at um, 20 carbohydrates down there, you see those little blue ketones? Uh, when they get up to 30 carbohydrates, um, that starts to increase the insulin. We have lots of fat burning, uh, even in the form of turning that fat back into glucose, which is part of gluconeogenesis. Uh, but that only happens when you keep that carbohydrate at, at less than, uh, less than 20 is what I prefer. Um, if you get less than 30, then you still not so bad, but boy, as soon as you shoot up to, you know, hundred carbohydrates or 150 carbohydrates, the insulin is so high that they cannot burn those, uh, burn those carbs. Um, a, a very powerful teaching lesson for all of us. Um, again, keeping that Dr. Boz ratio nice and low. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.